Alright, hello. Welcome back to the third video in the DLP experiment uh, running the FortiGate 40 OS 5.4. My name is Devin Adams. I'm an instructor here at Dynamic Worldwide in Tempe, Arizona. And if you were watching the previous videos, I doubt anyone ever watches these. So, um, <laughs> anyways, that's okay. That's okay. I thought I'd at least share my efforts with everyone. Uh, we saw the, the challenges that it comes to, to matching our DLP sensors. So, um, you know, for some reason, it it tried to, to think that it was a batch file. It got corrupted somehow, copying over from the shared drive. So, sorry about that. But you know what? I have no problem with recording my failures. Uh, but we were successful in, in matching it being a JPEG using kind of like the, the file scanner that, that checks the actual binary patterns of the file type instead of just a file extension. And we were able to, to pick it up. Now, the second that we converted to a, a BMP, yeah, unfortunately, that's when it um, got through. So, you know, you could probably stack the different file types that might come out. Uh, you can do the file names, the file pattern names. And that's why testing is so important. And there is really a difference between someone accidentally, unmaliciously, up, unmaliciously uploading a file versus someone that's trying to steal it. So, um, anyways, so uh, the next one I was going to do is some fingerprinting. But before I do that, one of the questions that also came up was what happens if that file is embedded in like a Word document, right? How does that all work? So, um, I went ahead and I I created a Word document, all right, and that is what it looks like in the text, by the way. See, it's just a bunch of garbage there. But let me try opening it up with WordPad, because it's really just an XML file. Um, there we go. So remember, we don't want this, this picture of Mona to leave the building, okay? And she is now embedded in this docx file. And docx files, which is uh, a Windows format for Microsoft Word starting with 2010, is just XML. And uh, you know what? It probably will match it as an XML file. And uh, we'll see what it looks like leaving the building. So I just wanted to do that real quickly and see if it doesn't pick it up or what kind of file it does pick up there. So. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So let me get to my, my Linux machine here. Alright, so there is the document itself. I am just going to bring this over. Okay. And also, I'm going to double check it. Oh, archive file types not supported. See, it thinks it's a zip file. Isn't that interesting, guys? So it thinks it's an actual zip file because that is what Microsoft does. It, it compresses them and it will, um, let's see if we can do it directly from the, there you go, that one opened up. Uh, it compresses all the XML stuff and just puts in the docx files. That's why if you're also scanning for zip files, doc files also come up. So I don't know why it doesn't like transferring over the file like that. I don't know if something's getting corrupted there. But if you if you look at it through this perspective, all right, what a smile.docx in the archive packager, we can actually come in here, all right, see all the document styles, see where it says media. I mean, there she is. I mean, she's in there. So um, she's not labeled as Mona though. She came in as as uh, image one dot jpeg. Ooh, that's very interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and see what happens when we. When we upload this so because um, remember we still have the logging turned on too so let's go to our shady website all right let's go to browse and I'm actually going to try to do this directly from the network um, let's see here can I do that other locations computer of course it doesn't make it easy on a Linux box uh, let's see here. Recent, maybe. What a smile from the share. Okay, there we go. All right. Submit. Look at that. What the heck? Look at that. Okay. Let's go ahead and see why it thought that file, our doc file, our docx file, was a data leak. So let's go to our, uh, let's go to our Windows machine. And let's look at our logging. 
All right. And here we go. Block, what a smile, doc X. All right. Weird. Okay, okay. So it said that it picked it up, right? So the data leak was what a smile dot, dot x, even though it detected that it was an MS Office X file, it was still uh, picking it up as a a JPEG. I bet you anything is because it was the JPEG itself, and that's the dangers of trying to block an entire file type. Okay. Um, very interesting. Okay, I did not think it would pick it up as a file, and it did. So uh, let's just real quickly take a look at our security profile. All right, let's go to data leak prevention, and let's look at our sensor here. And remember, the, the two things that we're doing is, and when we put criteria here, it's not an and, it's an or. So this is saying block all JPEG files and also ones that are specifically named Mona. So technically, we don't even need this guy right here. That would have done it, right? And it must have been when it unpacked the zip file to inspect it, because remember, the FortiGate will do that when it's doing its inspections. It will do its, its uncompressing. Um, it found the JPEG, and it just stopped it. So... Um, very interesting indeed. So, um, very cool. So, okay. Now I'm pretty sure though, if, if, um, if we had it named just Mona, remember when we unpacked it, it did say image one. So that's how it was imported into the document when we embedded it. And I'm wondering if, if hashing would, would help out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the file type, okay? Just have Mona, okay? And I'm going to hit, okay? Hit apply, and you'll see when we go back to our Linux box, that file is going to going to be blocked again. So, I mean, not blocked, allowed through, and that's what I was expecting, because it was picking up the JPEG inside of the Word document, and therefore blocking it. Now, in real life, if I really wanted to, to be very, very secure, if I could do a rule that said something like any Word document that had any kind of image file embedded in it, make a copy of it. And we haven't really talked about that, and that is the most resource intensive. Um, but if we go back to our Windows machine here, the action is actually called archiving. So if we say uh, log only and we say archive, it will take an actual copy of that document and, and, and essentially cache it and allow us to go ahead and, and look at it later on to make sure that there isn't anything in there. Now, normally we wouldn't have that turned on unless we had some kind of 40 analyzer and even then just for a short time because that could be a lot of, of data uh, packet capturing. So. All right, so I'm going to leave it there because the next one I want to do is the fingerprinting, and that's where it takes a hash of the file, and then it does the scanning, and it's probably going to be the best thing in our case where we're trying to protect a particular file. So um, let me go ahead and get that all set up, and when we get back, we'll, we'll do a quick video on how to configure the DLP fingerprinting, and then we're going to take the hash, and then we're going to go ahead and test it again. So... Um, all right, I'll see you guys in just a little bit.